Hello and welcome to this video on remembering a story. My name is Brendan Nolan and I'm a storyteller. In case you're wondering, in the background there is my latest book, Irish Love Stories, which is a collection of stories that you could buy, you can order from down below. You'll find the details and in it are love stories of Ireland, which you could tell yourself if you wished. But to begin with, to become a good storyteller, you need to become a good listener. At least that's what all the storytellers I know tell me. For a storyteller, when they listen to a story, they listen with intent and you must do the same. They listen to the detail of the story of what happened next and who did it happen to and all of the other building blocks that go into a story. They listen for all of them because they know that sometime in the future they will tell that story to another audience and they will need to know all that happened in that story. Once you've listened to it with intent, in your own telling, try to excite the listener with all the, the excitement and the wonder that you felt when you first heard this story. For don't please try to start off with a story that you've learned verbatim and you stand up to recite it. For the story will not thank you for it. You will be bored. And the listeners well, <laughs> the listeners may very well choose not to listen to you again. So pick a story that you like and tell it. But don't try to copy the way you heard it from another storyteller for you. You're trying to be a storyteller, not a mimic. So there's a difference. Sometimes when we start off, we try to emulate somebody else. You could try emulating me, but then you're not me, so then how could you do that? So, <laughs> No, be yourself. Just be yourself and remember the story. Remember, well, what happened to whom? Well, where did this happen? When? And how did it happen? And what happened in the end? And sometimes remember what the season was when you heard the story. And when is it said? Because in Storyland, there are always four seasons and that can affect the story, whether it was very, very warm out in the desert or whether it was very, very cold in the middle of the winter at the top of the Alps in the snow. When the snow would burn your fingers if you just touched it with your bare hand. So tell it in your own way and be confident. For you are a storyteller and story is everything. But if you want to prepare it and you want to learn it to start, if you wish, you can write out a rough presentation of the story that you want to tell. And then say it aloud or read it aloud and look for the awkward places and see if you can find the awkward parts. Because the story is telling you something. If it's not tripping off your tongue and it keeps it's a tongue twister and you can't say it properly, take it out. Throw it out, you don't want that. It doesn't matter how great it sounds to you or how wonderful or how wise or professional you sound, you think you sound in your head. You don't. It's tripping you up and take it out, throw it away and put in something else. Describe it in a different way, a simpler way if you can. And you'll be surprised <laughs> after a while when you're telling the story, the awkward part will have departed and gone. And you won't even remember what it was that you were so in love with. Um, as another way of doing it as well, if you want to write out bullet points down a page, like that, six or seven is enough. And try to tell the story in a single sentence to match each of those six points down the page. And make sure that you include who it happened to and when it happened and where it happened and how the story ended, Make just, you know, just put a little single, single sentence, a simple sentence will do you. And once you have that, that's the bones of your story. And you will always remember, there's only six points. You will always remember six at least, maybe seven if you're profligate. But anyway, I use six 
friend of mine uses seven. So it's up to yourself what you want to do. And once you have that, you see the bare bones of the story, then you know what happens in that story. And that's the way you will tell it. Add a sentence to each of the points, then add a couple more sentences and you build it up and build it up and build it up. And after a while, <laughs> you have a story, you remember the story and you will fly with that story. And you too will be a storyteller. And I would like to hear you tell that story. So, there's a, a short, very short, very, very brief Aesop's fable that I think is appropriate to, to what we've been talking about. And so, here it is. There was a farmer one time and he was coming towards death and he was concerned that his sons would not care for the vineyard in the way that he had all his life once he was gone. So he brought them to his bed his deathbed, I suppose you could call it, he was nearing his end and he knew it was his, his final days and he said to each of the sons in confidence, there is a treasure buried in the vineyard for you to find. He said it to each of them privately, but none of them would tell the others what he had said. And so he died, his people die and he was, the funeral was, took place according to the traditions of where he lived. And when it was all over, each of the sons crept out quietly and took spades and pickaxes and the instruments of the area that's used for digging the ground. And each of them dug away and dug away and dug away. And they kept digging and digging and digging and they didn't find anything. And each of them had to give up. But later in the year, when the crop came in, <laughs> that vineyard produced the most abundant crop anybody had ever seen. Clever man. Clever storyteller. Tell your story. And I wish you well. If you like this story, or if you like what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up down below. Thumbs up even down below. And please, please, please click on subscribe down below as well. And then each time a new video is posted, you will be uh, you will be notified that there's a new video on. So you miss nothing when you become a great storyteller. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like it, tell somebody else. And even that's telling a story, isn't it? Okay, bye.